Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and we're back here in the gun room at Bluefield Sports and I've got a gun, well, I would usually say that is quite familiar to you guys, but after all the changes that I've made recently, it probably doesn't look anything like the last time you saw it. This is of course the Smith & Wesson 1522. I bought this exact rifle about seven, eight years ago now put thousands and thousands of rounds through it. It's kept here at Blue Field Sports and I'm able to shoot it under various exemptions like the club exemptions and also the mini rifle exemption being a 2-2 rimfire. And I thought it was about time that I sat down in front of it and showed you around all of the changes. So I'm gonna start straight at the muzzle here. If you remember my trip to Utah, I ended up spending a lot of time around Cobalt Kinetics, even shooting uh, a few of their full autos. And actually on one of their full autos, they had this muzzle brake, and this is their pro muzzle brake for 223. The effect that this has is absolutely incredible. I was able to shoot a full auto 223 one-handed, and it was flat and smooth and incredibly comfortable. So, well, I just had to get one. Okay, it's on a 2.2 and it's designed for a 2.2.3. Even if it's doing nothing, it looks absolutely mean. A fairly big change as well is the handguard. Now, I had thought of actually getting one of the new 1522 Sport handguards. They are slimmer and smaller than the original that came on this, which was a quad Picatinny rail. Now, a lot of people have said that they actually don't like the, the thinness, the smaller diameter of the new handguard. I absolutely loved it. I've said many times before, I don't have the largest hand and I just felt it very, very comfortable. Then I decided to go into a completely different direction and I've ended up going for this carbon fiber handguard with M-Lock. Now this is available from uh, Black Rifle here in the UK. They were involved quite heavily in the development of the handguard and it was from the ground up designed for the 1522. I couldn't comment on whether it would be compatible with any other AR builds, but what I know is that it's obviously compatible for the 1522. It's solid carbon fiber, super, super lightweight, I think looks absolutely awesome. But my one complaint about it is that it is slightly chunky. I really do like the slim forend of the new 1522 and this is a little bigger. I've still got the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 on the top there. One hell of a scope. I think if you do any sort of practical rifle shooting, you're all gonna know about this scope already. I can't remember if I've actually ever done a review of it. It's probably well uh, overdue if I haven't. The only addition is actually I finally bit the bullet and I got a throw lever. You'll remember that on the previous Vortex PST that I had on here, I ended up buying one of those fishing rod attachments and I absolutely loved it. It was cheap and it worked. It was big and chunky. I am actually tempted to switch back to one of these. Obviously being a Vortex product, the throw lever that they make is super high quality. It's small and compact and looks like it's made to fit the scope, which of course it is. Unfortunately, it's just a little small. I just, I do find it harder to use. I do find it harder to, to operate. And with the previous sort of rod attachment, it was big and chunky, you could get straight on it. So again, it might be an addition that I end up switching back to. Underneath the scope here, you actually have a breech flag. And this is, it's really simple, but just a really, ingenious thought by Connors. We're always searching for breech flags after you've done a stage or if you're just down on the range plinking and you never know which pocket you've put it in, where you've put it down, if it's on the bench or even if it's fallen down on the floor. And as we all shoot, we thought, well, how can we change it? And Connors came up with this amazing idea to put a, put a Picatinny rail mount on a breech flag. So obviously you can put it in, into your gun, Obviously, you can't see what I'm actually doing that side. So it's in your gun, you go to start a stage, you just clip it onto the top there, you know where it is. It's also compatible with 223 as well. Uh, and well, just again, a smart, re really clever idea. Now, on to the main 
bit really the the biggest changes to this rifle and certainly the changes that I think ultimately would have the biggest effect in terms of speed in competition and reliability reliability of shooting so we have the maglode magwell this is their competition magwell designed specifically for the 1522 they also do a Christophiance magwell and there is also a standard AR15 magwell milspec magwell coming out soon this thing transforms uh, reloads it's just effortless you don't need to look at the magwell you don't need to think about it whichever angle you put it in it goes in and moving on a little further the magazines I'll get on to the extensions in a sec but it just it's effortless you you don't need to at any angle you can you can be really silly with it put it in at silly angles and no matter what you do with it the magwell the geometry of it will twist and manipulate the magazine into the magwell so an absolute must you'll also notice this little cutout here and really it's silly because I do have a drum mag I should have had it here to show you but it's for the black dog drum mag so a lot of the magwells out there you end up putting it on and you can't use a drum mag with it because it, it clashes well Connors has thought of that he's put this cut cut out in there and it allows you to to use the 50 round drum mag which has previously won me competition so it certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to be without it uh, if I'm able to use it Another neat feature of the Magwell is the geometry at the front. It's actually a bipod. You've got two raised bits here in the corner. And what this enables you to do is actually rest the gun um, on the Magwell so that it's easier to pick up if a stage allows you to do that. As well, having the Magwell uh, obviously increases the width the overall width of the rifle which means that if it's on its side again you've got more space there to get underneath and grab the gun at the start of a stage so there are many pluses to the magwell other than just quick reloads then we have sort of more functional parts you have the ambidextrous mag release again specifically designed by Connors at magload for the 1522 so you've got this big button here, it's got this honeycomb styling. Connors has said that he's thinking of changing that uh, to something I think a little bit more in keeping with the maglode look, but I absolutely love it. It's very textured, it's huge, you can get on it straight away, you're not gonna slip off of it. One criticism of my own doing, I don't know why I ended up going for yellow, I think I just got very you know, maglode misted in my head. I'm probably gonna end up changing all the infills to white to keeping with the rest of the gun uh, but as I said it's actually ambidextrous so on the other side it means that you can depress it and the mag is going to fall out and it, it allows you that in any scenario at any angle in any position you're going to be able to get to something to be able to release that magazine now you can see here the other side of the ambidextrous safety I'll flip the gun over in a second the 1522 ambidextrous safety from Maglode actually comes with two uh, alternate sides. So it's ambidextrous, I'm obviously right-handed, so I'm not really worried about the other side, but it does come with a longer tang that actually uh, matches the other side. So if you're left-handed or you're right-handed and you want a larger lever on there, you can do that. And it's actually their 30 degree safety. So if I turn it round quickly, the throw on it is minimal. It's just 30 degrees. Instead of the full 90 degrees that you usually have to do, it's a flick and it's rapid. Also, again, having stubby little hands, I can't always comfortably take the safety off a standard AR-15 safety. He's extended it slightly and with it being 30 degrees, I'm on it all the time. I'm, it's so, comfortable and easy to do now and is taking times off of my start so for me an absolutely invaluable piece of equipment that and I'm seeing real benefits for it. The other upgrade that I finally went for, I'd wanted one for a very long time, is a CMC trigger. You can see I've got the curved blade there. I'm actually thinking of swapping that for a, a straight blade. 
the curve, although it's you know obviously closer to the standard trigger, I feel I would be faster with the flat blade. I have tried them side by side, and I I just think I get on with the flat blade better. The reason I ended up going for the curve is that it was a second-hand unit. It was what was what was available. Got it for a good price. Tried it. I love the trigger as a whole. Again, transforms the gun. It's quicker. It's it's crisper. Everything that you're going to want in a trigger. And the only thing I really need to do now is actually get the flat blade for it. The last thing that I'm going to talk about and did touch upon earlier are the magazines. So you can see here that they've actually got extended bases on. Again, another Magload product. This actually gives you plus six, making a total capacity of 31. The standard magazines are, of course, 25 round. You've got an additional follower or a new follower uh, in there that comes as part of the kit. And obviously the base, the base is split into two and actually uses the geometry of the magazine at the base to be able to close in and secure. Once these things are on there, they are not coming off. And we've given them some serious abuse during development and they've held up really, really well. Uh, Magload is also very well known for their K22 bases, uh, extension bases, and you know it's the same material, same sort of design principle, and they're really popular. Don't seem to get any of them back in for warranty work. So I'm sure that this product, although fairly new, is gonna last you a long time and take some beating. But yes, yeah, so why 31? Well, within IPSC regulations, and that's what Connor shoots a lot of, he's very much an IPSC shooter, and all, although I've started going down that route myself, uh, he knows that the rules in IPSC is that you can only have 30 rounds in the magazine. The reason that you have 31 is because you're allowed one to be chambered. If you're gonna go for uh, uh, an option three start or an option two start, which means that there's gonna be nothing in the chamber, you would have to take one out and start with the 30 in the magazine, but that's something for you as a shooter to be aware of. So there we go, guys. I think that's about it. I just couldn't resist getting the Smith in its new form in front of you. I know it's an incredibly popular rifle, especially here within the UK, and with having so many Magload bits and working so closely with Magload and Connors, I just had to be able to show you the great products that he's releasing as well and use this video as a little bit of an excuse to do so. I'll put all of the links in the description below for you to go and find these products if you're interested yourself. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, I hope to see you soon.